Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am joined again today by Professor Ben Nicholson, uh, who is lead author for the upcoming headstamp book, Clockwork Basilisk, the early revolving firearms of Elisha Collier and Artemis Wheeler. Uh, we are currently pre-selling the book on Kickstarter, and you should definitely check it out. It is a fantastic piece of scholarly and also very interesting history. So what we are here today to talk about are fakes and replicas, because Colliers are one of those guns where there are high-end fakes and replicas, right? because Colliers are worth an insane amount of money. So is, is that basically as simple as it is? The guns are worth a ton of money, and so people make fake ones? You know, I, I, I wish it was like that, but, but there are intrigues in here. Mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, I mean, certainly there are people trying to pull the wool over your eyes and uh, uh, trying to make something as precise as possible is every forger's dream. And if they could get a copy of it in the Metropolitan Museum in New York, they would have had a good day because it's the ultimate con. And uh, I haven't found one like that. All right, so there yet. isn't, by the way, there isn't a fake one in the Met. No. Okay. No, 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 no. They've got, they've got, a, they've got a pretty good one. Okay. Not great, but it's pretty good. Uh, they, they, uh, they could up their game. I think some people may not realize that the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York has a firearms collection. Uh, and actually, it is the most visited collection within the museum. Don't tell New York. But that's it's the, the most interesting part. <laughs> it is. <laughs> anyway. So is it a matter of, like, professional challenge to copy them? or? Well, you see... I think the forger's art is that's always in the back of your mind. That if you could, if you could, if you could uh, dupe the expert, then you've had a good day. For sure. Uh, but um, so that would be at one end of the of the story. Then there's going to be someone who just wants to uh, convince the person who doesn't know a lot, and who has that sort of flutter in the stomach that they can finally get a collier, and uh, passion overtakes reason. Checks aren't made, and the money goes on the table, and the forger, rather than the copyist, has had a good day. Okay. So then you have um, uh, another kind of person who could never afford a collier, but they would be okay with a copy. Okay. And that is a, an acknowledged uh, 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 copy that um, uh, looks close enough, but is not the real thing. It's not a fake, it's an homage. Well, yes, sort of. exactly, e exactly. I mean, you, when you go into fakery, you deliberately deceive. Um, but even, but as they, every uh, uh, color of truth, it ain't always straightforward and simple. I can certainly see there being an interest in having a collier, just because yeah. it is such a fundamentally important firearm. Right in developmental history. Sure. You know, there are a lot of other guns that are valuable, but, you know, they, apply, they appeal to a very specific niche of one sort or yeah. another. The Collier is really, as you said, it's the fountainhead of all modern revolvers. Right. It, it could well be that it's running on the coattails of uh, Colt firearms, which there are some extremely uh, capable Forges, okay. and uh, the the the, the uh, cult collectors who have to work with um, uh, any of the walkers, they're really mm. on high alert. That's like true. super high alert. Yeah. So I would say that that this is a sort of a subset okay. of, of of that uh, group. So we know there are about eighty authentic yeah. colliers out yeah. there. Yeah. How many fakes, replicas, duplicates yeah. did you encounter? Well, we've got probably half a dozen. Okay. Which is a lot when you think about it. I mean, six out of 80 uh, is a lot. That's true, that's almost, that's like 8%, 7.5%. Uh, exactly, of... yeah, it's a lot. Okay. Um, and then there's also the question of where they might be made. I was just about to ask you that. Yeah, and I would like to say that um, the, uh, th those made in, in Europe and the uh, East are about 50-50. Really? But I, you know, we've never met a, a forger or okay. a copyist or, a, or a, 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 any of those personalities yet. And I'm looking to do so. Okay, so are they being made currently, you think? Or was there a time period when this was? The, the 1970s, you see, f fakes and forgeries are one thing regarding 
faking the, uh, the artifact. Then you have to fake the provenance. Mm. And that's where things get really tricky. Okay. And so if the story begins to dribble out at a particular decade and there's nothing there, then you are on, again, high alert. There's no evidence of who was a previous owner. Uh, there's no evidence of, of letters or mis- uh, catalogs from an auction sales. There's nothing. And then there's dirt. Dirt? Uh, yes. The, okay. the dirt on dirt is really important. Because if you have, like, new grease, something to watch out for. Uh, uh, it, it, you know, that, that crud between the uh, checkering uh, uh, is important. It's hard to fake. Very <laughs> okay. hard to fake dirt. Okay. So, so uh, the dirt on dirt is important. Um, there's also the way something looks and the way that it is engineered. Uh, so, for example, quite difficult to fake screw threads when you don't know what the screw is and you haven't got a die, because dies are not easy to make. Right. Uh, that's another craft itself, particularly when the screw tapers. Mm. Okay. Uh, so uh, we now have uh, a, a pretty good understanding of uh, what the screws were and how they were made. And, and you know, in, in the, on the Collier team, we have some super talented, capable, engaging personalities, uh, two of whom are engineers. So okay. they don't mess around. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, yeah. It's interesting that if you were trying to fake one of these prior, especially prior to the internet, yes. on the one hand, you have this benefit in that your potential buyer yeah. is unlikely to have all that much information. They're just, yeah. There weren't a lot of really good pictures. There wasn't right. a lot of documentation, right. and especially trying to hunt down provenance. Yes. But on the other hand, the forger or the faker is similarly limited in that they're going to have a hard time finding right. a really good example to know right. exactly how to make one. Yeah. Uh, well, well, here's an example. Uh, there are a, a couple of, I'm just going to call them fakes, where there are um, uh, proof marks on the rear of the cylinder. Now there which is there ought to be which there ought you to would be. think uh, no problem. There should be proof marks, but in the whole family of colliers, those proof marks are kind of higgledy piggledy. Hmm. But these ones have the proof marks in precisely the same kind of wrong position. And that, that's one of those like micro moments where you think, uh, do- doesn't look right, doesn't feel right. Interesting. That's cool. And proof marks will put you behind bars in England. If you, mm. if you strike huh. proof marks I in England, think about it. you're, you're uh, at Her Majesty's pleasure, as they, <laughs> as they say in England. Huh. That's right. It would be, because that's the whole point of proofing, is it's a serious safety right. thing. So very, very serious safety. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. not just markings. Those, yeah. They're markings with a very significant meaning. Sure. Uh, a sure. legal meaning. Sure. You know, so, so I, I talk with collectors about um, fakes. Because mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have the money to do this kind of thing. I, I do. I, I can look in and uh, be the be the academic. And I always ask people what their emotional experience is when they have a fake in their hand. Mm. And it, it's on one hand, you want to buy it because then you've got a collier. But there is this sort of groundswell of almost nausea, whereby passion is fighting logic. <laughs> and and uh, so there is, you know, terms like, it's not quite right, mm, doesn't feel good. Uh, and, and the general rule is, as soon as you have that emotional experience, put it back down on the table. Okay. And, and uh, I, I, you know, that, that aspect of human collecting is pretty fascinating. It would be. There's a lot of interesting psychology in there. Oh, a lot. A lot yeah. Okay, so I want to put this out there for the audience, and frankly, yeah. I'm not entirely sure myself. What does a collier cost? Like, this is such a, a high-end yes. level of collecting. You know, there's, yes. there's 80 of these guns in existence, yes. and the majority of them are in yeah. museums where yeah. they're not on the sure. market at all. Sure. Like, someone who's looking at a collier... What's the difference between, oh, that's a pretty nice real one versus, oh, yeah. that's a pretty nice fake? Yeah. You're, you're looking at a lot of money for a fake, aren't you? Even an acknowledged uh, fake. Uh, an acknowledged fake is going to be under $5,000. Oh. Under. <laughs> Cheap. Virtually <laughs> yeah. nothing. Fair away price. Piddling. <laughs> um, there have been two what you might call wall hangers come okay. up, and they are also under 
five thousand dollars. Okay, I'm honestly surprised by that. Um, and and the so-called wall hangers have some in, in, extraordinary tales to tell. Um, then you can certainly travel north of a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, you can travel north of. $120,000. Okay. But in, in that zone, you, you're entering the private collector's world, which ain't the same story as going under the hammer at Christie's. Okay. It's just not the same. Because um, uh, fakery is also to do with storytelling and provenance and, and a, a level of secrecy and, and what it is to be in the club. And uh, just the delight of passing something to... A collector who you trust. Okay. And and so for the for the for the, the great collectors, they don't want this a put into a museum because then it's out of circulation. Right. And therefore you adjust the price accordingly. Hmm. Okay. But this is all conversational. You'll never have any proof of it. Of course. But but it, I think it belongs in this uh, beautiful uh, uh, dance of of passing one thing. To the next, one, one thing to the next. We're, a lot of collecting at, at a lower level can be yeah. very interesting and very historically relevant, yes. but it's largely a commodity. You know, there are a lot of guns out there where there are tens of thousands of examples yes. of something. Yes. And when you get to a level of collecting like a Collier, sure. it's, it's almost like every known example has, it's got its name and its yeah. number, and it's like, yeah. oh, that's the one that went through that collection sure. to that collection sure. to this collection. Sure. Uh, and, and believe me, it's a real mark of um, uh, kudos to have uh, a collier or any firearm, for that matter, that has been through the great collections. It's much like actually, it's more probably more like art collecting than gun collecting. It, it, well, look, it is art collecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like what painting by one of the great masters. Absolutely. So, ah, this one. Yes. Was in the Louvre, and then yeah, it sure. went to this collector, sure. and then this sure. collector, and now sure. it's going to be mine, and right. that's why I'm willing to pay a hundred thousand dollars for it. Right. Right. Way, way over and above. Right. The the the, the, the ticket. Um, I uh, I would say that. Um, Here's another aspect of copying. <clears throat> Colonial, Colonial Williamsburg makes firearms in their forge. Okay. Now, everybody can watch that gun being made. And the craftsman wants to get as close as possible to the original uh, as they can. Mm -hmm. So this is certainly a copy. Uh, it's acknowledged. It may be signed by the uh, gun maker, uh, you know, 2021. Uh, 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 but, but the desire is to get all of the techniques learned. Okay. And for me, there's no such thing as a bad collier. Uh, whether it's a delicious one or a super crappy one, or a wall hanger or, or a fake made in some place that we don't know where, where it is, they're all interesting because they describe a way of life, a way of collecting, uh, a state of knowledge of uh, metals, and finishes and uh, screw making. There's, there's no such thing as a bad piece of truth. Okay. And you can't be, it's not really such a thing as an amateur copy of a collier, I suspect. Because they are so intricate and so deliberate. Yes, yes. Like, yeah. you're trying to sell it, but theoretically, you're trying yeah. to sell it for tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. There's a level of effort that's going to have to go into it. Right. But and I suspect... Collier himself might look at a few of those fakes and go, sure. oh, that's, sure. that's pretty well done. Sure. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. There are, but the, the ones where the person has copied from the outside and doesn't know the story on the inside, mm -hmm. they're my favorites. Because it, you know, it's, it's, it's like someone looking at a body having no idea that there's a heart and a liver and a this and a that, and they would design the body with a tube going through it because <laughs> they just don't know, right? So <laughs> you get inside some of those. The NRA has a particularly wonderful one okay. uh, that, that they have acknowledged as being a fake. Um, and uh, you, the, the inside is just a hack job, total hack job. And wow. then they're, co they're really good copies the interior of the lock is absolutely delicious. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, I didn't even think about it. Does anyone shoot colliers? It's probably well, not. I, 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 you know, I it, every one that I come across, don't tell anybody this. I mean, uh, no, <laughs> please don't tell anybody this. But I always ask, or I, 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 I assess the person. 
<laughs> to see if they would be willing to fire it. Um, there are some of the great British collectors uh, who would only buy a gun if they could fire. Okay. Fire it. And um, if if I was uh, if I had a collier, I probably wouldn't do that. I, I probably would. I couldn't resist. That sounds like actually a pretty good investment for a five thousand dollar fake collier. If you could find one that was workable, right? Not not garbage on the inside, but well made. Sure. There's the gun to shoot. I, w- I, I, I agree with you. So how about a pact? <laughs> you find one. Wolf. Anybody finds one, and we'll we'll we'll. Uh, uh, it, it, where I come from in southern Indiana, anybody who has a su- suspect gun, you, you go to a tree, you wrap <laughs> your arm around the big tree, you pull the trigger, and you only lose your hand. <laughs> uh, we'll find a ransom rest or something to put it in. How about that? <laughs> yeah. I would love to try shooting something with one of those magazine prisms. Be it, it would be really good. Yeah, yeah really good. Yeah. I did ask Pedasoli, um, mm. um, what is his name? The, 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 oh, I don't uh, know his first name. But. At, at the shot show, mm-hmm. I went down there, eager beaver that I always am. Yeah. How hard could it be? And, uh, <laughs> you know, they make uh, reproduction weapons. Absolutely. So, hey, Collier would be perfect. They do browned barrels, and I was just imagining this exquisite. Uh, yeah. Breshka is, is, I think, where Pedasoli is. Brescia, right? yes. Bre- Brescia, Beltrum, right. Yeah. And um, he, he like, basically looked at me as if I was a complete madman and, <laughs> and, and said, said, no, Mr. Nicholson, uh, 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 no, too dangerous. <laughs> too dangerous. Really, too dangerous. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of things that you could, like, forget. Suppose. Yeah. That's so, unfortunately, Pedasoli. I, but at least I tried. Yeah. You know. You'd now, think that would actually be a really good candidate. For someone to make uh, yes. uh, an acknowledged commercial reproduction, even a small run of them, yes. that's one of those guns that you could charge. You know, it would it would have to be a small run because they'd never they'd never be all that popular. Yeah, and so the price would have to be up there, commensurately high. Yeah, but yeah. I think a Collier copy would would fetch that high price. Well, well, uh, Ian, as you know, we are working with uh, World of Guns, mm-hmm. and we have made a completely fictitious. That's right. You uh, have com- fic- like complete CAD CAM models. Total CAD CAM. Every pin yeah. and screw. Right. And I have mm. spent thousands of hours on it, and and I know that they've spent thousands yeah. of hours, and we have gone over every little tiny detail to get right. Mm-hmm. So, look, I'm a forger, <laughs> <laughs> and we, we forged a prototype that is in the description, but it doesn't exist. And so we worked with the firearms before number seven and after number seven and imagined what number seven really was. Okay. So, hey, anybody can do it. Okay, so somehow this video started off being a discussion about <laughs> fakes and replicas and it's turned into a business plan to make them. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. And, of course, World of Guns, they actually uh, uh, plot uh, I, they they say they're willing to plot the collier, so I guess everybody can have one in their own home. You know. Well, we'll try. Yeah, we'll try. So there is an entire chapter on this subject in the book. Yes, um, you you would never think that that would happen uh, in in a book that wants to be super serious. But the fact oh. of the matter is that this is super serious. Oh, I think this is absolutely an yeah. essential element. Yeah. If right. if it's something. Granted, there's only going to be a small number of people who are actually going to get the book, so that they can go get a collier. Because right. there just aren't that right. many out there, and no. you've got to have seriously deep pockets. Maybe one hand. But um, for those people, that's an essential element. And right. I think it's really interesting, valuable context for yeah. everybody else. Yeah. If I'm looking, even if I'm looking at something yeah. as mundane as a, a faked provenance on a Luger, sure. I think it's relevant to the more fake and replica guns you understand, yes. the better of an, an eye you have for spotting them elsewhere. So. That's absolutely the case. Yeah, yeah. And as you say, it's really interesting to just get this idea of how did people, what were the results of people trying to copy a gun about which there was very limited information? Right. I mean, this is all about veracity and truth. Yeah. And, and humans love that. They want something that is original. Yeah. I mean, even, even if you remake a spring, it, you've just lost however many percent on the, on the on the quality of the of, of, on the price, not the quality, but on the price of the gun. Right. Just a spring. You've increased the quality, but decreased the value. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and 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 you know the screws, the the dome, the the, the the form of the dome, the engraving. I mean, the engraving is that's really difficult to do. I'm sure. And yeah. you know, selecting the wood 
is really difficult to do. Okay. Because um, with a, 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 a collier, you have a very, very straight uh, stock. Right. It's almost 90 degrees to the line of the, uh, of the charge. Right. Now, if you just get out a piece of uh, walnut <clears throat> and uh, out of a board and, and cut it, that thing will shear right off. Right. So they're choosing a piece of biological horror where the, <laughs> the, the organic roots uh, or, or the, the gnarl and the knot and the, the burl and all of that uh, combine so that there is uh, energy in all directions right. to resist. That makes sense. So, the, you know, uh, w this is what we look for. Yeah. Well, if you guys want to read <coughs> even more about uh, the fake and reproduction colliers, as well as, of course, everything you would ever want to know about the true colliers, the, the fountainhead of the modern revolver, uh, check out the ongoing Kickstarter campaign, and you can pick up in pre-order and pick up a copy of Clockwork Basilisk. Check in the description text below. Hopefully, uh, whether you're interested in the book or not, you found this discussion interesting. Um, thank you for joining me again. Always good. And thanks for watching. Mm.